Oh, wait, you're listening. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. <coughs> you're listening, listening to Radio Lab. Radio Lab. From WNYC. See? Yep. How would it end? I ain't got a friend. My only sin is in my skin. What did I do to be so black and blue? You be so black and blue. Child, this is why I've been feeling like I blew in the face for years. I'm just like, this period, basically between emancipation and the Harlem Renaissance, it is the key to our American character. Could I get your name and your title just to begin? My name is Rhiannon Giddens, and I am a singer, player, composer, and an armchair historian. Okay, quick intro. This is The Vanishing of Harry Pace, a miniseries on Radiolab. I'm Jad. I'm Shima. We begin uh, this week by branching out from Harry, uh, and we couldn't resist but bring you this short episode. Yeah, so this one came about when we called up Rhiannon Giddens during our research. When I found out about Black Swan, I was like, yes. This is what we were doing. We were doing all of it. I wanted to ask her a whole bunch of questions about Ethel Waters because I knew she sometimes performed Ethel's songs. But then suddenly... You know, what is Black? What is American? We were on a bullet train speeding through hundreds of years of American history. Minstrelsy. It started with that word. Minstrelsy was such a big deal. It was like the first American cultural export. It was like rock and roll before rock and roll, right? Minstrelsy is this phenomenon starting in about the 1830s, went on for about 100 years, you could even argue longer than that, where you had white musicians dressing up in blackface and singing these disgusting racist songs using very exaggerated stereotypes of black people. We touched on this a bit in episode one. But on this particular call, Rhiannon started telling us about the way this minstrel past has never really passed. There was there was an Australian prime minister in a minstrel troupe. In oh century. my gosh. Like, no. Literally, there's a picture. It's online. I, I could show it to you. This will connect us back to Ethel in just a second. So it's weird. You have like white people in blackface playing music that does actually have authentic African-American roots. But then black people start to join minstrelsy because you're trying to get a job, honey. It is uh, one of the few jobs that they have open to them. But to do it, they have to put on blackface. Yeah. The very first moving picture done by the Lumiere brothers on British soil in London is of a blackface minstrel troupe outside entertaining. The other place that minstrelsy went, other than Hollywood movies, is cartoons. Right? Even Mickey Mouse, the formation of him with the white gloves... Then you get to like Bugs Bunny and all this coming there. Like Bugs Bunny and Blackface. Multiple cartoons. You have to laugh because you cry otherwise. Mm. And then you have the Coon song, where this imagery from minstrelsy is getting funneled. The most popular song of the period? All Coons Look Alike to Me. I'm so fascinated with this song because a lot of these songs are so catchy. But this song was so incendiary that you could whistle it at somebody and you could start a fight. Are there other songs you can point to where you're like, wow, this is a great song if I just listen to the music? (sighs) All of them. All the songs we learn in third grade or whatever, these songs were originally minstrel songs. Which ones? Oh, Jimmy Crack Corn. Little Brown Jug. The Camptown ladies sing this song. Ooh, da, ooh, da. The Camptown races. I've been working on the railroad. I've been working on the railroad. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, Catch a tiger by the toe. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. In the original, it wasn't a tiger they caught by the toe. They've been cleaned up. Dimbo, Dimbo. Dimbo, Dimbones. I mean, anything with dim in it, minstrel scene. <laughs> I remember being in choir, singing Jump Down, Turn Around, Pick a Bell of Cotton. I remember. Me too. I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Everybody knows this song. The Oh, Susanna, that verse. Oh, they took that one out. Oh, that's because James Taylor sang that. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, so I jumped aboard the telegraph and traveled down the river. It's not yeah. a minstrel song if it's not in dialect. I jumped aboard the telegraph and traveled down the river. 
river, you know, what that's going to rhyme with. The electric fluid magnified and killed 500 inwards. Oh, dang. Uh, yeah. Wow. Oh, this is nothing. This is nothing, y'all. When I do a show, I get gasps when I talk about coon songs. Mm. Go, all coons look alike to me. And they're like, oh, my heavens. Pearls are clutched, you know. <laughs> it takes a lot of thinking to figure out what to do with this music, but shoving it under the rug is not the answer. Do you yourself perform any of these songs when you do your shows? The one that I do is Underneath the Harlem Moon, and I do Ethel Waters' version of that song because I saw that film. I want to be a great man, man. Is it Rastus for president? Rufus for president? President. I can't remember, but it's with Sammy Davis Jr. Me? He's like four, not four, but he's very, very young. In the movie, he gets elected president, becoming the first black president, but as a kid. You got to say something to your constituents. You know, it's a dream, but it's the white people's idea of what what would happen if black people took over the presidency. From now on, Pope Chop will be free. I do. I do. It will be his duty. To plant the watermelon vine. Talking about the watermelon amendment and like that. It is too many loaded dice in this country. Shooting craps and and it's just the most horrible collection of stereotypes ever assembled on one screen. I mean, they're just awful. At the end of the movie, they're in the courtroom and in strolls. Now, Senate, listen here. Ethel Waters in an evening gown, the office of the maybe a fur, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen it. Ethel Waters plays the mother of Sammy Davis Jr. And I'm also raring to And she sings the song. The old babies walk along. Underneath the Harlem Moon, and I was like, what the heck is this? Huh. Rhythm in their feet, in their lips and in their eyes. It's so good. And then I looked it up. And I was like, whoa, those aren't the words that she sang. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> she rewrote half of that song. How? What'd she do? Like, look, these lyrics. Like, I found the original Underneath the Harlem Moon. Let's see. Creole babies walk along with them in their thighs, rhythm in their hips and in their lips and in their eyes. Where the high browns find the kind of love that satisfies Underneath the Harlem Moon. They don't pick no cotton. Picking cotton is taboo. They don't live in cabins like the old folks used to do. Their cabin is a penthouse up on Lenox Avenue underneath that Harlem moon. So that's how the original goes. She sings. We don't pick no cotton. Picking cotton is taboo. We don't pick no cotton. Picking cotton is taboo. Right then there's a change. She Mm -hmm. is owning it. She's like, nah, y'all aren't going to talk about us. We're going to talk about ourselves. Underneath. Underneath our Harlem Moon. That, that is like the biggest change. It's not underneath the Harlem Moon, it's underneath our Harlem Moon. She's like, oh no, no, no. I'm going to talk about my people now. We're never blue eyes. Even there's a line that's, that's why we darkies were born. She changed to the, That's why we Schwartzes who are born. That's why we Schwartzes were born. <laughs> and if you know her relationship with that Yiddish song in vaudeville that was such a smash. It's a song that made Ethel famous in vaudeville circuits called Ellie Ellie. You know, like the idea of blacks and Jews, all this, these are the things also that we don't talk about. The different cultural connections that were going on. It was all the melting pot. Jewish people, Chinese, the Italians, Polish people, Arabs. Nobody in, the, in our race is jet black. I'm a brown-skinned woman. We are many colors. I love her. Here's one of her verses. We don't pick no cotton. Picking cotton is taboo. All we pick is numbers. And that includes you white folks, too. And that includes you white folks, too. Because if we hit, we pay our rent. On any avenue underneath our Harlem moon. Right? Such a gravitas. Like, you can just hear it in her voice. Once we wore bandanas. Now we wear Parisian hats. Once we were barefoot, now we're sporting shoes and spats. Once we were Republicans, and now we're Democrats, which has a whole nother meaning. Wow. Right? It's that political shift that happened around that time. I mean, she owns wow. every aspect of being a black person. I get goosebumps every time I sing that song. I do her version of Underneath the Harlem Moon. 
And that is the moment I, I un unleash. I un unleash my bitterness. Mm. <laughs> that's like, that's the moment of me kind of just giving it to the world. Just like, you know, I wish I didn't have to talk about this stuff, but I do. But you know what? Ethel gave me this vehicle to let loose. If you could rewrite all of them to be like that, that's what I would do. This is The Vanishing of Harry Pace, miniseries on Radiolab. Who are you? I'm Shim Oliai. And I am Jad. And uh, this episode was a little bit of a shorty, but uh, in just three days, we have a bigger one coming. And it's a good one. Uh, his story is one of the most inspiring stories in, in Lost Sounds, I think, because, boy, he was one of those people that, that just knocked down walls. <laughs> This guy was like a battery grab. You know, when he went overseas, they were, you know, hide your daughter. You know, this black man is coming, close down the windows because he's dangerous. Somebody's going to be pregnant before he leaves. All that kind of nonsense. When he walks out, he is booed and hissed. He believed that it was like the epiphany of the Apostle Paul. What he accomplished was extraordinary. This story is just bananas. It's a story we did not expect to tell, but when we bumped into it, we were so surprised that we just had to include it. That is coming up in three days. Uh, and before we leave you, we just want to say thank you to Throughline, uh, Throughline Podcast. We did a behind the scenes interview with them and. They've just posted it on their podcast feed. If you search Throughline Podcast, they're amazing. Thank you, Ramteen and Rund. Definitely. Thank you for listening. We'll see you in a few days. Bye.